Today we're in New York hanging out with Blake Malin and Zach Weiss of Worn and Wound, one of the fastest growing watch blogs in the country. Known for its approachable yet relevant and insightful commentary on watches, Worn and Wound has developed a cult following over the past few years. So both Blake and Zach are photographers, they're writers, and they're watch guys. Today we're going to get to know Zach and Blake a little bit better and hear some really great watch stories. So I'm Zach Weiss. I'm the co-founder, executive editor, and creative director of Worn and Wound. My name is Blake Mallon, and I'm a partner and co-founder at Worn and Wound. I had always been interested in watches when I was a kid, but uh, no one really there to sort of guide me and tell me what to get, so I just kind of went to the mall and got a piece of junk, and I probably lost it after a couple months. So, you know, we started looking online, trying to find information on watches in the, you know, two, three, four hundred dollar price range, and we had a really hard time finding stuff that was in-depth or curated, and it just had a really hard go of it. So that's when we sort of started to start Warner Wound. I think we bought a watch and started the website with that. So, Warner Wound is, I mean, it's a few things. One, there's the, the watch blog where we've always kind of focused on value-driven watches. And then we have the product side, which is a very big side of our business, where we have pursued making kind of like great original American-made watch straps and watch cases. One thing that really separates us from our competitors is that we design everything ourselves. The first watch I'll go through is the uh, Hamilton Chronomatic Panda Dial. This one was an accidental purchase in a sense. I, I was just browsing a watch forum. Uh, it was there at a decent price, not that I really knew what they would go for. I knew it was special and it was interesting. Did not have what the guy offered, offered a lower price. He eventually came back a few days later and was like, my other buyer fell through. It's yours if you want it, so I had to get it. It's an exceptional watch. I mean, it's, it's stylistically, it's gorgeous. It's just incredible proportions. But then the story behind it, very interesting. You know, most people associate the caliber 11 movement with Hoyer and Breitling. But Hamilton actually bought into Buren, which was the company that was developing the caliber 11 with them. So they had a, a stake in it. So they had a small amount of them. I, you know, I don't really know the quantities, and they made only a few watches with it. So, you know, it's just a, a very rare watch, but then the look of it's really, I think, what kind of keeps me there. It's just like a perfectly designed little chronograph. I really like the fact that there's no applied markers on it. That's all flat printed and graphic, that there's the contrast tachometer on there as well. Even the contrast date in the center, you know, it's six to give it that real, like, that true, like, panda, like, two eyes and a mouth almost look, which obviously wasn't the intention to make it look like that. But then it's also a strange watch by today's standards. It's, like, 15 millimeters tall, but 35 millimeters wide. Like, it's very funky. If they brought a watch out like that today, people would be like, really? Like, that's so strange. But it just works perfectly. This is a watch that I saw at meetups, and I just couldn't keep my eyes off of. I would pick it up every time I saw it, I'd put it on my wrist. There's just something about it, I think, you know, it's a larger watch, but it's just, it fits me well. I have a little bit of a bigger wrist. I just love the proportions of it, you know, coming from sort of the Rolex Tudor family, the build quality on it is just outstanding. And I just love the contrasty dial, the white markers, the white blocky markers. I just feel like it's such a good contemporary interpretation of that snowflake Tudor style. I just love that so much. It's sort of significant to me, one, because it's the most expensive watch that I have in my collection and I just beat the crap out of it. I wear it all the time, like, I, I'm not precious about it at all. And it was a bit of an achievement watch for me. I had to flip a bunch of watches to get it. I didn't really have the cash to get it straight up at the time, so it took a little bit of sacrifice, but I almost forget about the watches that I had before because this has been well worth it. The Sin 156 was a watch that I sought out for, for a while and it totally started with just absolutely adoring the Hoyer Bund. And then when I learned about the Sin 156, which has been out of production since the 90s, actually kind of following the production or the stopping of production of the Lamania 5100 movement, I saw it and I was just like, well that's the one I have to get because not only is it the Hoyer Bund case design, you know, 43 millimeters, plastic, rotating bezel, and it has the 5100 movement in it, which is to me like one of the coolest chronograph movements. The exceptional aspects of it has a central minute counter, 24 hour hand at 12, but just super, super tough and overbuilt, so it was used in a lot of military watches. 
specifically the German military watches and NATO forces watches that were made by Tutima, because it can do something like oh, seven Gs and not lose any accuracy like with the chronograph running. It's also like extremely shockproof from a drop perspective. So I just really like that this movement that I think but considered by a lot of people almost like crass and like it's kind of like the, it has plastic in it and people are like, oh, it's an ugly movement or whatever. Like it's not meant to be a stuffy horological movement. It's, it's just rugged, you know, you don't look at it. It works and it works really well. But yeah, then aesthetically, I mean, it's a big watch and I typically like smaller watches, but this one just looks so cool. You know, and it just it just works. I love it, the function of it. The one I have here, like, I didn't get it to put in a safe or anything like that. I wear it very regularly. Yeah. So this is a, a Nomos Orion 38 millimeter date. So this is a watch that we got in for review, and I think everyone in the office is pretty enamored by it. Uh, it's just, I mean, for obvious reasons, you know, like Nomos does everything so well. Their build quality is excellent. Just everything is so thoughtful and well executed on it. You know, they do sort of restrained elegance so well. It's not super blingy, though it's got a touch of gold on it and it's got a polished case. It's just a sort of this perfect package for me and it's also very different from a lot of the other watches that I own. So it's sort of a nice departure. But one of the things I really love about this watch is, you know, I'll show people my watches or my collection and, you know, if I show them the Pelgos, they say, oh, that's too big. Or if I show them some of my sins, they'll say, oh, that's too rugged or military, I don't like that. But then I show them the Nomos and they almost always say, okay, I want that. Like, that's the watch for me, you know? Um, it's just, it's simple, but it's got that sort of perfect design detail and attention to detail that only Nomos can do. So I just really love this watch. And I love showing it to people because it always wins them over. Beginning to appreciate watches more has been a vehicle for me to really appreciate design, manufacturing, engineering, style, all these different things. And I think the more that I've become interested in watches and gotten to know about that, those avenues, uh, the more I've been able to apply that to clothing or shoes or anything else in my life. You know, I'm able to examine other objects in my life and say, where, how was that made? Why does it look like that? You know, where did it come from? And I think owning a watch and getting into watches allows you to become knowledgeable about those things. And it allows you to become sort of curious and uh, thoughtful in those ways in other parts of your life as well. I think it's more to have objects that last and you can kind of have an attachment to. I think that's that's a concept that, you know, I'd say for people, you know, my age and younger has been fleeting with the objects we get. You know, you spend a lot of money on a phone and then you're just immediately thinking about what the next one is and you throw it away. So watch the fact that you can get it, that it can kind of live with you, that it can build a story with it, that it can really kind of accentuate or express your style, and then that it'll just have this heritage with it. There's just nothing really else like that right now. So yeah, I don't think everyone needs 10 watches, 20 watches, but like a really good mechanical watch that like you love and really kind of works with you and who you are. I think, yeah, everyone should have one like that. I think Worn and Wound in all of our different pursuits is the place for people to come to learn about watches. Whether you're sort of seasoned and you know a ton about watches, we get nerdy enough. But if you've never heard about watches before, you're going to be learning about watches in a really unpretentious, approachable way. We try not to talk down to people. We try not to get too in the weeds. We try to talk about watches of a wide range that are going to appeal to people of all different tastes and positions in life. So whether you're new to watches, just getting into it, have a lot of money, have a little bit of money, you're gonna find something that you're gonna really love at Warner Wound, and hopefully we're gonna present it to you in a really appealing, unpretentious, approachable way.